For too many years, families of children with devastating illnesses have felt helpless as they watched their child suffer. Today, they're taking matters into their own hands and finally finding relief treating their child with cannabis. These are their stories. Hey everyone, welcome. Welcome to another episode. Hello, hello, hello. Yes, guys. Uh, as you know, we were just in um, Epilepsy Awareness Month. Yes. And we've had some great guests and we're going to continue to do so uh, moving forward. And tonight is uh, just a great night to have a special guest um, coming from way of Jamaica. Her yes. name is Gabe Valentine. And um, this young lady is also the CEO and owner of Freelancer and Gail's Virtual Hub. So with Gail, the um, interesting thing is that she's developed um, epilepsy at an early age. And as she got older, she's worked through it and she's able to continue with her life. So for parents out there who always thought, you know, not always, but who have been thinking about like what my child is going to be like, what's going to happen in the future for them. We have this lovely young lady online who's going to share her story and her experiences as she gets older. So parents have some hope in knowing that, you know, it's not, you know, things are going to be all right. Hey, Gail, welcome. Good night. Hey, thanks. Good for, night, everyone. Great. Thanks for coming on. And, and, you know, I was reading your story and it's so inspiring. And I was just like, my God, OK, this is this is someone we really needed to talk to because, you know, as I shared with you, we have a eight year old, seven year old son. And, you know, those are the things that we think about, like what his future is like. And for you growing up um, and dealing with it, what was your experience like, you know, just from the start to finish? Okay, so growing up, my experience was rough. Uh -huh. It was terrible. Um, as I said, it was difficult. Mm. It all started as age three, where um, basically I was like operating like every ordinary child mm -hmm. until um, my parents saw me doing this um, by rubbing my hands this constantly behavior and they started to get concerned right mm -hmm. and then um they said okay they can carry me to the doctor and when they said um check it out they realized that um i was diagnosed with epilepsy and that was up on seizures what did, uh, so can you describe yeah. more what, what were you doing that to make your parents realize that something was abnormal I was rubbing, constantly rubbing my hands together and staring away, uh, like zoned out. Oh, zoned out, so like the Blank stares, and you're just like not there, like trying right. to communicate with you, but you weren't there. And this was early on in age, at three. Exactly. So you were born in uh, Jamaica? Yes, I was born in Kingston, Jamaica. And what was it like growing up there? For especially to give people visual effect of, you know, what was your surrounding, you know, what was it like? Because... I mean, I have not visited Jamaica. I would love to. So it give me an idea, basically, of what was it like growing there? Well, um, it's growing up in Jamaica is like growing up in any other country. Mm -hmm. It's a tropical country. So it's like, it's a wonderful country. So it's like growing up in any other country. Got it, got, got it. it. It's a beautiful country, yeah. Oh, nice. Lots, lots of vegetation and mangoes in the backyard. Yeah. Okay. And a lot of vegetation. Oh, wonderful. Now, when you were diagnosed with epilepsy, what I mean, what did the doctors tell your parents? Like, what can they do to help or what they couldn't do to help? What was that like? Well, when the doctors discovered that I had epilepsy, they told my parents that I might great out and I might not great out. Mm -hmm. And when they realized, based on the condition, that I have to live on medication for the rest of my life. Wow. What kind of medication were they mm -hmm. re recommending? Yeah. Well, that I don't remember what kind of okay. medication um, was recommended at that time. Oh, okay. Because of how young I was. Yeah, I'm just <laughs> wondering if you're still, are you still on those medications or you're no longer taking medication? Well, yes, I'm on medication. Okay. And what I should add that I was seizure free for twelve years. Oh wow. But it started back last um year, February. 
Wow. Yeah. What was the tr- mm-hmm. what was the trigger? Cuz that's something interesting, you know, to have a break for that, that long. It's a long break. It's wonderful. Yeah. yeah. That was awesome. And do you know recall what triggered it or is just that it just happened to just What come triggered back? it? Yeah. Um, fright. Oh, really? Yes. yes. I'm sorry. What did you say? It was a fright. Okay. I was I was in a situation and it all oh, bombarded fight. my brain, everything. I was so, and I got so frightened. Wow. I got too much of it, too much of it. So basically, if you want to put it that way, I trashed <laughs> everything just. Oh my God. Yeah. So your body like went into like a shock. In head. Yeah, the fight or flight. They yeah. say that could trigger seizures exactly. as well. The fight or flight. Well, life is not my, tr- it's not one of my triggers. Mm-hmm. My triggers are like stress, um, lack of sleep. Yes. And yeah. one of them is around, um, the no- sorry, one of them is around my um, menstrual cycle, which is also called. Yeah. Catamino. Yes, See, I see a lot of um, posting on that on yes. the epilepsy groups about the catamino seizures for women. Oh, for women. Okay. I, I didn't, I've never heard that term before. So those are my triggers. Yes. That's interesting because our son is either he overheats or um, the lack of sleep, like you That's said. Big. Um, we've also learned mm-hmm. that also if he doesn't have like a balanced meal, that could also trigger it. As well, and also constipation. Yeah. And yeah. Constipation is another one. So he said, one. basically, you got to be healthy all the time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And no stress. Yes, yes. No yeah, stress. Yeah, no stress. I can't manage stress. No. Yeah, they, yeah you can't. can't manage too much of it. Mm-hmm. And sometimes my emotions can be mm-hmm. one of them. Oh, yeah. Our son, too, when he's um, crying a lot. Yes. He'll, we, we he's say, a Capricorn. We'll say... Yeah. Calm down. You're going to trigger a seizure. Yeah. And just <laughs> yeah, breathe. that can cr- trigger a seizure. Mm-hmm. No. But it is not my number one trigger. Stress and lack of sleep is my number one trigger. I, yeah, I think for our son, too. Lack, yeah. lack of sleep lack is of his sleep. number one. And, yeah, and then stress mm-hmm. along that when he gets upset about something. Because, mm-hmm. you know, kids, they want things their way, so they don't get it. They get upset. <laughs> <laughs> but I think he's catching on that. He does it. He'll stress himself out. He'll, he'll have a seizure. So he's like, I got to breathe. I breathe. <laughs> Now, growing up, in, uh, I mean, going through high school, how was that? Um, because you were still, were you still experiencing the seizures while you were in high school, attending high school or elementary school? Well, attending high school, it was, it even gets rougher because the reality steps in and know that I'm, at that time, yeah, the reality steps in and know that I'm identifying, identifying myself at the same time. Um, I was being ridiculed, shunned, and pushed aside because of my condition. Oh, my God. And they just didn't understand. It was just pure mm-hmm. pure ignorance on their part. They just didn't understand. Right. Can you tell us what type of seizures you had? The type of seizures that I had were um, subtle seizures, um, clonic clonic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, those two. Those two. Oh, those two. Okay. Wow. Now... Were you able to go through high school? Like, tell us, you know, basically, how were you able to at least have, if you had friends or teachers you could talk to that you could, that supported you, you know, what was that like? Um, were you able to make friends? Were you able to at least assimilate to a certain point um, that it would get you through high school? Or to get you through school altogether? Well, yes, I had friends. Mm-hmm. I had supportive friends. Had um had a supportive family, which is yeah, I have a supportive family background. Mm-hmm. Yes, so a strong system. If you could turn back the time and talk to your eighteen-year-old mm-hmm. self, what would you tell her? Mm-hmm. Well, I would tell my eighteen-year-old self, "Don't give up. That's not an option. Mm-hmm. Don't be afraid." Don't be ashamed of your condition and don't lose hope. Okay. That's good. That's good yeah. to know. Yeah, it's good. And, and... Um, pray. One day you'll be able to buy love, do more shopping. <laughs> One day you'll move out to your parents' house and save more. <laughs> well, okay. Good to know. Yeah. That's good. Now, moving forward, what have you been doing, in a sense, in the area of advocating for epilepsy, sharing your story? 
trying to help those who were who are possibly in your shoes or going through it, and you know who've been there. Um, in a sense, like, have you been uh, been on the radio? Have you been interviewing? Have you been meeting people? Have you been part of any organization? Well, I'm advocating via social media by sharing my experiences. Mm-hmm. And I'm also working with the Jamaican Epilepsy Association and other advocates. The Jamaican Epilepsy Association, what are they, what are they doing for people with epilepsy in Jamaica? Okay. The Jamaican Epilepsy Association, they help um persons by like um like giving them medication. Mm-hmm. They to them, mm-hmm. you know, they reach, they do outreaches to schools, oh, nice. offices, and educate persons about epilepsy. Now, how's the response been? I mean, have you noticed the numbers that have been growing of people wanting to get involved, looking for your support because they have epilepsy and they need the support and they have nowhere to turn? Have you seen the numbers grow as more and more people are becoming aware of the program that they're willing to come out and speak? Because again, they were f- maybe afraid of uh, being shunned or, you know, or ignored. And now that they know they have advocates like yourselves in this organization, have you seen that the numbers have been growing from the first time you joined them? Um, kind of, because persons are still um, afraid to speak about the condition epilepsy mm-hmm. because of the myth and the stigma that is attached to it. Wow. Now, do you have people coming from outside of the country coming to speak in your country to talk to people about it, to let them know that they shouldn't be ashamed, they shouldn't be, feel to be afraid about it? Well, um, you have doctors here who constantly speak about it. Mm-hmm. So I'm not really, well, I can't recall if um, persons outside I've come here and spoken about it. See, we should we should make a trip out there and share our story. Because I, I feel that, you know, as a person, as a lovely person like yourself, a human being, you know, you need support. You don't need the extra stuff that people are going through, which is their fear and ignorance. You know, and that's basically, that. that's right. not your problem. The, the, the Jamaican Epilepsy Association, mm-hmm. which is also the JA, mm-hmm. um, we aren't getting that much support out here. And you're not getting uh, the support. Uh, mm. mm-hmm. So you guys are not on top of the list of, you know, we need to get this organization, you know, fully funded, fully supported to help everyone. No. Out. It's not that. So it's, it's a lot of not like there's all this association like the cancer, the diabetes, mm. where yes. persons are easily gravitated towards and say, okay, I'll help that, I'll help that. No. As yeah. I said, it's because of the stigma. Yeah, it's funny. Our last uh, guest said the same thing, that that there's more research and awareness for breast cancer yeah. than it is for epilepsy. And yeah. epilepsy is such an old, such a old uh, disease, and, um, right. uh, and more people are actually affected with epilepsy than breast cancer, but still, yeah. epilepsy there's, is, is basically under awareness, if that's such a word. Yeah, I think it is, because <laughs> it's not getting that, fun- that funding that uh, most organizations need. And it's sad because the numbers are growing. With people having epilepsy, the numbers are growing over the years. Now, what are your plans? I mean, now that you're working with this organization, and uh, what are your plans in the sense of making awareness um, as it relates to your personal life? Like, what are you doing outside of this organization or with this organization? Like, what are your plans? Well, my plan is to do more radio and TV interviews and to try and get articles posted in the newspaper. Oh, okay. Now, have mm-hmm. you have you been able, how's that been working out for you? Well, I've done a couple radio interviews um, last November. Well, and it was, it was good. Okay. Oh, how did you get connected with that for that interview? Oh, I got connected. Well, I reached out um, to some radio stations Mm -hmm. and um, the executive director of the Jamaican Epilepsy Association. Mm -hmm. She uh, reached out to some um, radio stations and um, she asked me and another member, which is another um, advocate to do the interviews.
Wonderful. Mm -hmm. That's great. Now, as it comes down to your, your company, I know that you uh, started your company. You have a freelancing company. What made you decide to do that, and how did you get started? It all started when, um, in 2018, mm -hmm. when um, I launched Gay's Virtual Home. I wasn't working at one point. That was in 2017. I did this um, course online, mm -hmm. and it's this freelancing course online, and it it grabbed my interest. I was like, okay, this being from home online work, um, I can make money online. So I started to, and it, that was on Fiverr. I was like, this is interesting. Yeah. I, you know, it's okay, this is good. And at the same time, I love business. Yeah. And I was inspired by my father because he is of love business as well, mm -hmm. like my brother. So I followed in their footsteps. Uh, awesome. Now, how does it feel to do, like start your own business, doing your own thing, and branding yourself? Um, when I launched, when I found out that this was something that I enjoyed, I was like, okay, then I think I'd like to branch off on my own and start something. Mm -hmm. And it would be better for me to, you understand, as a person living with this country's condition, and it's much safer being at home. Got it, got it. No. Right, being an entrepreneur, because when you try to sign um, employment out there um, in the corporate, yeah. it's hard because the company does, um, doesn't want to live up to the responsibility of those individuals. Uh, yeah. So you had to let mm -hmm. them know, basically when you were job searching, you had to let them know that you, you had epilepsy. Right, and if... If you let them know, they, I, I don't see that they're like to employ you. Mm, and they won't employ you. Wow. You see, exactly. Because in the U.S. we have the HIPAA law, but I don't know if you have something like that that protects you. Yeah, and yeah, we have. You don't have to tell um, employers. employees about your disabilities. However, if you, for example, have a lot of seizures and you have to take a lot of days off. That will affect you too. That may affect you're, exactly. Yeah, or you're tired. So or... I, I advise persons um, with epilepsy to go, um, go towards this type of career, which is entrepreneurship. It's funny you say that because that's where we we're, we're, heading, with we're heading with Aiden. Like we're trying to develop like a family. Business. Really? Yeah. Yeah, because we, like, we the same thing that you're saying. Like having, you know, a condition and. It might be just be better to have your own business. This way, you could yeah. dictate how you work and the time, the yeah. time frame. Because like for Aiden, he works better in the evening. Yeah. So for him to, you know, say he has seizures at night, and for him to be at a job at eight a.m. every day, maybe it will work. It may not work. Yeah. So so. Well, it's less stress. So you you it's manage less your stress. own time. You yeah. know the days. You know which day you want to work <laughs> yeah. and. The yep. timing for each day, mm -hmm. and um, for example, I can tell you a story. There, I was setting some time for um, a prospect, mm -hmm. and um, my husband told me that if the time goes, if sorry, not the time, if the work goes over a particular time, you can perhaps to continue that the following day because you're not staying like up. Oh, too late. Yeah. You can have to get your sleep. Yes, they need their sleep. So, yeah, you're right. You're right. And um, even for all of us, you know, it's hard to going to a job every day. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> even without a condition. Yeah, that's so. true too. Now, uh, currently, what are your seizure activities like now? Are they about one to two a day, three a day? Or are they just you know they they vary? You know, in that sense. Well, being the whole COVID and thing, I'm not getting that much project right now. I should say I'm not getting no project, none at all. Wonderful. Oh, wow. Wonderful. Congrats. 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 Now, do you exercise daily? Like, what's your daily routine like for you? My daily routine, I will get up at 6 o'clock in the morning. Um, do I have to do? See my husband off to work. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, that's basically it. After no, 
after I do that, then probably I'll go back to sleep, get some sleep, get back off. If I have something planned for the day, then I'll go on the road and then come back home. Oh, okay. Now, do you have a place mm-hmm. to, do you go for walks, exercises, meditation, you know, certain things to help you keep you calm, to help you get through the day? Well, um, no, I don't go for walks, but at nighttime, I may lie down and meditate mm. until I drop asleep. That's, that's the best kind of sleep, too. It is. That meditation. Yeah. <laughs> now, do you, pre- do you, now, do you prepare any kind of meals to help you, too, as well? Are you specific, or you just basically eat your traditional food? Well, I used to try to keep the diet. I tried this, and, oh, my God, I think I cheated, and then I went back to my own day. <laughs> it's yeah. tough. Yeah, we tried it, too. Yes. <laughs> but I can... Um, I can do the whole diet thing. I think I just have to be disciplined again. That's, mm-hmm. that's it. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. So what would you want to share with a parent who has a child that's, you know, basically just been diagnosed with epilepsy? Like, what do you want to tell that parent? What, If you could, what would you want to tell that parent? I would tell that parent that, cause, well, I'll share this quote with the parent, which is my favorite quote. Not because you take longer than others doesn't mean you fail. That's one thing. Remember that. Mm. I love it. Yeah. I love it. I yes. love it. That's, the, that's yeah. a quote that I live by every day. Just wow. because you take longer than others doesn't mean you fail. Right. Yeah. And I think, and, and that's what we're actually teaching our son right now because he would say, I'm working hard. And, you know, it may take him longer to do the math problem or get certain concepts. And we said, yeah, things are going to mm-hmm. be hard, but it doesn't mean that you're not going to get it. Yeah. He's and, a perfectionist. And we he have, will get, he will eventually get it. Don't pressure him. Yeah. Because there's, I think math is a, um, math shows up a person with epilepsy more than any other I'm sorry, subject. Math is harder, right? Yes. Math I is know. harder. And I think persons can be um, a person who doesn't have epilepsy um, can be hard on a person who has epilepsy. Yeah, it's not. true. It's true. Oops. And that gets me angry. Like, take your time with the person. Be patient. Yeah, yeah. We're learning that with him, and yeah. I and I've, we've been discussing. Yes, yeah, so the the um Aiden will eventually get it. You just have to be patient. Like, yeah, taking step by step. Exactly. Come on, he will eventually get it. And I, I appreciate that. Cause yeah, we appreciate that. Because I, I get hard on them. Yeah, he gets hard. No problem, anytime. Yeah, it, you have to understand that they'll eventually get it. And I, I think during COVID, I had to say, you remember, this is an epilepsy, a child with epilepsy, so they're not going to get something right away, especially when it comes to math. No, they're yeah. not, not going to get it right away. No. And good seen, things on another one, good thing takes time. That is true. And he, he has surprised us yes. as a way. He does remember certain things. He'll go over and it's like, oh my God, you were you were listening. I thought you weren't trying to pay attention. I thought you were just there. I thought you were going through some seizures. And he'll tell me, yeah, daddy, I remember. And I'm like, wow, okay. So yeah, uh, for me as a parent, I, I appreciate that because it is true. I do have to be patient with him. I think for me is I'm nervous about his, you know, him in school is he getting it is he going to get passed on are they going to leave him behind all those things makes me want to make sure that that does not happen to my son so i'm like fighting for him but i'm also fighting him in which i realize that does not help yeah you don't don't one thing i have to say um don't give up on him as a parent Mm. don't give up try everything as a parent and i should i should have said this earlier on in the interview my first career growing up, I wanted to be a special education teacher, but then, you know, as you grow, you change career paths. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. Because of my condition, that is what um, I wanted to be. Wow. That would have been nice, too. Yeah. Wow. Now, now, do you go into the community and, um, and help other children who have the condition, who has this condition? Just to give them like some sense of hope, are, are you in touch with them? Do you go see them? No, I know. <laughs> no, I know. Oh, okay. no, I know. But first, like I just said, because I volunteer and work um, with the Jamaican Epilepsy Association, mm-hmm. with persons speaking and like want a little advice, I may reach out to them and um, advise them and try to comfort them and everything. 
you know? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's, that's awesome. I'm uh, I'm hoping that one day uh, my wife and I would come out and host a show live there <laughs> and really get to meet some of the people and um, and meet your association and talk to them and see how we can connect and help you know get that message out and try to see get you that support you guys need to keep the fight and also keep supporting um, your community because uh, it's really serious and it's really affecting people and uh, and we're very appreciative of what you do in in Jamaica there to get the message out. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much, You're Gail. You're welcome. Anytime. Yes, and we appreciate you coming on, Gail. And if people wanted to get in touch with you, how would they be able to do so? You know, your email address, they your website? In touch with me by my email address, Gail Bows, which is nice one at gmail.com. Mm-hmm. That's G A I L B A L 91 at gmail.com. Awesome, awesome. Thank you again. I hope to have you get, uh, in the near future and to really just do a follow-up and see how everything's going. But hope once this um, COVID thing lifts that we could definitely start to really travel and uh, Jamaica's definitely on our list. Sure. All right. Well, you have a good night, and thank you for coming thank on. Thank you, Appreciate Gail. It. Thank you, and continue. please continue supporting and continue uh, getting that message out. Thank you. Thank you very much, and thank you for having me. My pleasure. Okay, good night. Okay, good night.